out here in my, my garage. garage. <laughs> Actually, I, I literally am in a parking garage. Anyway, these are five things that every lifter must learn. I might have just broken that. <clears throat> anyway, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. So what most lifters have to learn is that lifting is not enough. It's not enough just to lift for an hour or even two hours per day. There are other things that you probably should be doing. And this took me a while to learn uh, in the middle few years of my, my lifting. I should have been doing some other stuff that I just didn't. And the first one is a step count. So before I would go to the gym, I would lift, I would come back and I would not really be getting a lot of steps in per day, and the majority of the day I was sedentary. This is not good, just lifting some stuff in a small part of the day each day, that is not enough for optimal health. Those might be 10K, 12K, 8K, probably somewhere in that range is a good minimum, maybe 6K, but I would say ideally a little bit higher. This is gonna reduce all-cause mortality, this is gonna be good for recovery, this is gonna be good for blood flow, this is gonna burn some extra calories, allow you to eat a little bit more food, definitely improve your body composition. Uh, it's just a good thing to do, and I would space this out throughout the day. So it's not enough just to walk before training or after training or during training. I would say after meals, take a 10, 15 minute walk, especially after lunch, maybe after dinner. Uh, this is actually quite common in China. People will go and walk for 30 or 40 minutes after lunch, and then they will have a nap. Um, same with dinner as well. This is gonna improve your insulin sensitivity, your glucose to tolerance, get that stuff, all that sugar, out of your bloodstream, and this is just gonna be really good for overall health as well. The next one is gonna be mobility, especially of your balls. True story. And by your balls, I mean your ball and socket joints, specifically your hips and your shoulders. Lifting is often not enough for these areas. Yes, you squat deep, but that doesn't mean you're getting your side-to-side -side mobility or your rotational ability inside the, the hip joint. Bench pressing is certainly not gonna be enough for your shoulder mobility. Often power lifters have terrible overhead mobility. I'm not saying if you only bench press, you're gonna get injured, but you might want to improve your mobility. This might not actually help your bench that much, but I would say it's just a good thing to do. Now is mobility like the key to a big bench press? No, but it's a good sort of insurance policy and you wanna make sure that you do have decent shoulder mobility and this is gonna help with a wide variety of lifts and just generally staying healthy. And a lot of lifters have really, really bad mobility to the point where they can barely hit depth around parallel for the squat, let alone ass to grass. Um, if they go below, like they can barely get the, the bar to their chest in a bench press. Uh, they can't even get into position for a deadlift, let alone you know a deficit deadlift. And you should not have your mobility be a limiting factor for powerlifting because the mobility requirements for powerlifting are not very high at all. And I try to observe older lifters. I know that sounds creepy, but look at what the guys who are like 40, 50, 60 are doing who have been lifting for 20, 30, 40 years. Often they put mobility as a priority, whereas guys who have been lifting five years, eight years, 10 years, and they're younger, maybe you know mid 20s, early 30s, often mobility is just a complete afterthought, if a thought at all. Number three is cardio. Now it is true that you can stimulate the heart and get your heart rate up through lifting, especially higher rep, lower body training. But I would say this is sort of an inefficient way to go about this because you're often just bodybuilding at that point or you're training for strength and it's sort of a roundabout way to go about it. If you really want to improve your cardiovascular strength or your work capacity or your heart health, lifting might not be enough for a lot of people. For me, I am, well, maybe not fortunate enough or lucky enough, but I have a base of running. I've ran thousands upon thousands of miles. I still have a resting heart rate of in you know the 40s. So for me, maybe cardio is not as much of a priority, but I would say if you're getting winded between sets or if you you know walk up the stairs and you're like, like you're kind of gassed, you should make cardio a priority. And this is actually probably going to help your lifting. People talk about the interference effect. Oh, your strength is gonna go down. 
it's not really going to go down if you structure things well, you manage things well, you can recover, it's not excessive. And this will actually probably help your lifting in the long term. I've seen a lot of people who are kind of mediocre power lifters and they're afraid of doing higher reps because, oh, cardio, oh, is that Spanish or something? And that is really just shooting yourself in the foot, especially in the long term. And what about this interference effect? If you're out of shape, you can't recover, therefore it's going to interfere with your ability to gain strength or size. Boom. Number four is diet. Lifting weights is very, very healthy, but it doesn't really override a shitty diet. If your diet is super inflammatory, well, guess what? Training is also inflammatory, so you're sort of, you're sort of stacking those effects in not a great way. Plus, it's not like lifting actually burns that many calories. Even if you're very, very strong, people almost always overestimate how many calories they burn in a lifting session. I train pretty high volume a lot of the time, but that doesn't mean I can eat whatever I want, especially if my current goal is to lose body fat. Diet has to come first, and particularly for health, diet is essential. You can't just think, oh, I'm a lifter, therefore I can eat whatever I want. Unfortunately, that's not really how things work. And yes, you can almost certainly increase your strength by gaining a significant amount of body fat via eating whatever you want. Looks like you got a little pain behind those eyes. Yeah, maybe a little. But is that really worth it? Unless you're a professional power lifter, probably not. And even if you are, I think optimizing your body composition and at least taking your health and long-term performance into account is something that is a good thing. Number five would be prehab. I think this is often overdone. Pop up, pop it up. That's not it at all. Do less, get down, try less, do it again. Pop up. Nope, too slow, do less. Pop up. Pop up. Too, you're doing too much, do less, pop down. Pop up now. Stop, get down, get down there. Remember, don't do anything. Nothing, pop up. Well, you no, you gotta do more than that because you're just laying, you, right out, looks like you're boogie boarding. Just do it, feel it, pop up. Yeah, that wasn't quite it, but- You shouldn't be doing prehab that is longer than your workout. I have actually seen that a number of times. People who they spend 40, 45 minutes or more just doing prehab before the actual workout. To me, that doesn't really make sense. And just because something could happen doesn't mean you need to try to prevent it. Uh, I've had a number of injuries when I was running or when I was lifting, but that doesn't mean I could have prevented those with prehab. Maybe I could have, but that doesn't necessarily mean that going back in time and doing prehab was the answer because I don't have a time machine. However, I think a number of areas are oft injured and can be perhaps prevented or the risk can be mitigated just by working areas like your rotator cuff or your glute medias. Again, this sort of goes back to mobility. Um, you know, just you want to be in balance and you don't want to be doing a ton of prehab, but I think a little bit goes a long way, especially if you're not working those areas with traditional lips. There aren't that many compound movements that are really working the rotator cuff or the glute medius. I think single leg work is really, really good as well. Just a little bit of stability, some core work I will also personally be working in as well. And in some ways, just from my personal experience, this QL issue is sort of a wake up call that I need to sort of diversify my training uh, at least a little bit. And at some point in your lifting journey, you're going to get a wake up call that just traditional big compound movements performed a few times a week might not be enough for your goals. It could be going to the doctor and them saying, hey, you have high blood pressure or uh, your blood work is not very good or you have some kind of hormone issue. Which brings me to today's video sponsor, me, myself. I'm sponsoring my own damn video. I don't have ads on my content, so grab my book if you want to help support the channel or you get an injury. Could be aches and pains, just could be getting out of breath when you go up the stairs more than you used to. There are a lot of wake up calls that I think lifters get after 10, 15, maybe 20, maybe even 30 years of training. Whereas a lot of that could have been prevented had they diversified things and maybe been a little bit less hyper-focused on just a few activities. So get your step count up, 10K is a good target. 
Get your diet in order, especially if you have body fat to lose. A little bit of mobility work, some prehab, those are a little bit related. And then toss in some cardio as well. Doesn't have to be high intensity, doesn't have to be super intense, doesn't even have to be excessive. Again, with a lot of these things, an ounce of <laughs> prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, and it might even be a better ratio than that. Snapping your shit up or trying to undo years of neglect can be very, very difficult and challenging. Uh, and therefore, I think it's better to attack these issues earlier rather than later because they happen to a shocking number of people. All right, that is all for this video. Sort of a weird location to film in. Um, definitely grab a copy of my book. It will help you a lot on the training side of things. Knowledge. Like, do YouTube stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.